let's take a look at how you can create a consolidation on Sift Analytics. So the first thing you need to do is click on Add Entity at the top right of your corner. And here under the Sift type of entities, you'll see consolidation. So if you click on consolidation, it'll ask you to name your consolidation. So I'm going to call this training consolidation. And you then need to select the country that that consolidation is going to be in. So we're going to select United States. You'll note that the currency and year end auto populate, but you are able to go and change that. Just to note, SIFT does allow for consolidations which have different year ends to the underlying entities as well as multi currency consolidation. So just make sure you've selected both of those appropriately and then you can click next. You'll now note that this consolidation has been created, but so if you look on the sidebar, you'll see training consolidation is now the entity that we're in, but it doesn't have any of the SIFT sections because we don't have any financial data in it yet. So to get that data, we need to go and select the entities that we want to include in this consolidation. So let's go and include Jay's Cupcake Company. So there we have it. And we're going to go and include Shorts as well. And you'll note that these two companies have different currencies and that's fine because SIFT will go and automatically convert these currencies to the currency of the group, which in this case is USD. And so SIFT will handle that multi-currency element and we can go and add as many entities as we would like. We can also add groups here so we can go and add a consolidation over here. So we're going to go and add a consolidation to this consolidation and I'll show you what that looks like later. So over here, you'll see the entity names that we've added to this group. We can see the currency and then we can select the consolidation method. So you'll note there's two types of methods. If you're unsure as to which one to choose, you can click on this question mark item and it will explain each method to you. So the first option is the proportional method, and this is a management accounting approach for consolidations. So if we select the proportional method and we go and say 50%, then this is the percentage that will be applied to include all of the profit and loss and balance balance sheet items in our consolidation. So only 50% of Jay's Cupcake Company's profit and loss balance sheet, everything will be included in the group. This is often used for partnership accounting or in franchise. So if you're doing a partnership or franchising, or you would just like to only include your share of this entity within the consolidation you're building, then you should select the proportional method. The other option is the acquisition method. And the acquisition method allows for business combinations and acquisitions according to IFRS and GARP. So if you have a controlling interest in an entity, even if you only have 80% of the entity, you technically control it. And so 100% of that entity should be included within your consolidation. And any minority shareholding can be accounted for using SIFS journals, which we'll learn about later on. So you'll note with the acquisition method, it doesn't allow for a percentage because it's going to bring in the entire entity. If you select the acquisition method or proportional method at 100%, you'll end up with the same result, but just make sure you've selected the correct option for your purpose. The next selection we have is the acquisition or disposal date. So to set the acquisition or disposal date, just click on it and you'll note that it gives you a consolidated from and a consolidated to option. And if you don't want that, you can always discard it and it will remove it. The acquisition and disposal date, as the name suggests, is useful if you acquire a new entity during the course of the year or at some point in the future. So it will only start to consolidate that entity from the date that you include here. And if you sell something or you dispose of it, then you can go and include a consolidate to date and thereafter it will no longer include that entity in the group. So if you lose control of it or you sell it, you can go and input a consolidate to and it will stop accounting for it at that point in time. But we'll look at the impact of these in a later video as well. So I'm just going to discard for now. We're going to just have a standard consolidation with no acquisition and disposal dates. And we're going to click on complete setup.